A compelling detective story, a cloak and dagger action and a romantic drama, all these stories were taken from real life. The history of Kazakhstan is inseparable from the world history. Reflections on history, our version. The Institute of Her Soul. It's the children's musical theatre at the present time. Although the performance hasn't started yet, the young and not very young audience can always engage in something. She always said that the best singer was a bird. She was like a wounded bird arriving in the city located at the foot of the trans Alatau in 1943. The theatre was always like the medicine for her soul. Our theatre of opera and ballet was the first to open in all Kazakhstan. It was the first theatre in Kazakhstan and the first Almaty theatre mentioned in the biography of Natalia Satz. There are stories of theatre life from the perspective of not just a director, but resident of the theatre. A theatre is like an institute of the soul. Why is it an institute of the soul? Because some things can occur only in the theatre, and it's quite difficult to bring them about in real life. Such things include magic and music. You realize that Almaty is something poetic and beautiful in all respects. The theater must have been like a second home for them, or even their real home. She came here after she was released from imprisonment. She'd been in the camps. Chapter 1. The Opera Novels. We have two opera troupes, a Russian and a Kazakh one, a wonderful orchestra, ballet, and very good singers. However, we have problems with producing, so we're very happy that you've arrived. We'll be given two ration stamps. As for accommodation in Almata, we are in a desperate situation because there are a lot of evacuees here. Thus, you'll have to stay here. You and your daughter will live in the administrator's room. From the Novels of My Life by Natalia Satz. It was a small room near the box office. To get there, you had to go through the entrance hall and turn left. Specially invited guests and people with complimentary tickets knocked there. The auditorium was behind the foyer. It was the Almaty Opera House during the war. I can say that I was incredibly happy at that time. First, I found my mother. We were like two friends. She looked very young. As for me, I couldn't be old since I was only 17. Finally, they were together. After five years spent in the Gulag, Natalia was exiled and Roxana was allowed to leave the orphanage and join her mother. Natalia Sads, the new director of the Kazakh troupe, and her daughter Ksana were happy. It was like a wonderful fairy tale or exciting adventure. In the intervals, I went with a kettle to the toilet, made tea, poured it, and we drank. An audience visited the opera house, which was considered our real home. It was very interesting. She found everything very interesting and Everything made her happy. She proudly said that we lived in the wonderful opera house. She liked the people, trees and mountains, whose snow-covered peaks emphasized the beautiful facade of the theater built in this way, on purpose. The mountains make a splendid backdrop to the theater, which is why that place was chosen for building the theater. Everything was so perfect inside that when a person entered it, they realized that the theater world was like. 
However, it's impossible to find that small fairy tale room where Natalia Satz and her daughter lived. The theater has undergone restoration a few times, and as a result, everything has changed. Chapter two, a theatrical chord. Music helps say what you can't express using words. Yes, that's true. I was amazed by the splendor of the Opera House. It seems that the builders knew a lot about Italian architecture, but since they were fond of Asian patterns, they made this building sound like an amazing elaborate chord. From the Novels of My Life by Natalia Satz. This amazingly elaborate chord can be noticed literally everywhere here. This building has a complicated past. The awful truth about this building hasn't been known for a long period of time. According to a report, they needed a building for the Armati Theatre of Opera and Ballet in the early 1930s. The all-union vacancy was announced and the project, Kruglog, was quite a famous architect at the time, was selected. It wasn't easy to complete the construction because they lacked materials and qualified workers. Actually, they had no technology, but there were a lot of political prisoners in Alma Ata, and every large construction site was like a concentration camp where they lived. Nobody knew about it until I discovered it. When construction was underway, the architect was declared an enemy of the people. Engineers, builders, designers, and even a part of the workers were arrested on the charge of sabotage. As for Kruglog himself, he disappeared somewhere in the Soviet camps. He was sent to the north, to Karelia. Probably he couldn't endure that climate and died like many other people. A fire started in the unfinished building, and after that the construction was suspended for a few years. It was resumed before the war broke out. Prostakov, who according to documents was a graphic designer, took up construction and finished it. He's a talented, ordinary person who is very determined, Natalia Satz wrote about him. Later, Prostakov constructed the building of the Amati Youth Theater. Since he wasn't very good at architecture, Shusev was his consultant. The latter was a famous Soviet architect. He designed the mausoleum of Lenin and worked on the Amati Opera House too. The first performance was given in the new building on November the 7th, 1941. It was the Nargis performance by Muslim Magomayev, the Azerbaijani composer, who was the grandfather of the famous singer named after him. Who was at the root of the theatrical scenography of this theater? It was Tilakovsky, the director of Imperial Theatres. He was in exile here. There were great people. He said that he didn't write Kazakh epic literature or draw Kazakh patterns, but sang in order to produce the scenography for Yeturgin and Koblandi. There were great singers performing Kazakh operas, Kulyash and Kanabek by Sietovs, and Muslim and Rishat Abdulins were among them. Natalia Satz wrote that there were a lot of talented Kazakh artists. Muslim and Rishat were very good actors which played an important part in the opera. Kulyash by Sietova, besides being a singer, was a very good actress too. The Kazakh actors were highly talented. They acted in Kazakh, but you could understand everything. The first opera Natalia Sad saw was Kuz Zhebek. She was amazed at the wonderful performance, melodic folk songs, new costumes, and images. Chapter 
Chapter 3. Familiar Faces. The theatre is always alive, regardless of whether performances are given there or not. We entered the auditorium an hour before the performance started. People were looking for their seats and unfolding them, which produced sounds similar to tom-toms. The atmosphere of unusual festivity reigned there. Who entered? Was it really Eisenstein? Mom, it's Paganel from the Children of the Captain Grant. Serafima Beerman, Vera Maritskaya, and Mukhtar Awezov were great people whose numbers increased. From the Novel of My Life by Natalia Satz. All of them attended the first night performance of the Giselle Ballet. Galina Ulanova did a solo performance. She had arrived to meet her husband, Yuri Zavadsky, who was the head of the Mosoviet Theatre. The moving life of Giselle and other roles she performed won the hearts of the Ormati audience. She put on the Giselle Ballet herself and danced the leading part. She performed in the Fountain of the Bakshar Sarai and Swan Lake. There were always packed auditoriums and people were absolutely amazed at her talent. She flew like a butterfly. You, you couldn't see the floor when she was jumping. What helped her fly like that? Of course, it was her talent and technique. After Yuri Pomerantsev received a serious wound, he started working in the Opera House too. He sang in a chorus and performed a small part in Ulanova's ballet. They were told to choose some young person from the chorus. He just had to walk from right to left. This part was given to me. This was the only experience I had. Pomerantsev was often chosen to play small parts on stage of the Opera House. It happened thanks to Kalina's father, director Yuri Rukovsky, who gave solo parts to young talent. Eugene Onegin completed his journey and returned home. There were guests and the chorus was singing, who was Tatyana, the wife of the general, and so on. They were singing, the one who was standing near a window. Rutkovsky said, Yura, you'll sing one word, which is, who? Pomerantsev was Sat's favorite student, and later he performed leading parts in the youth theater. Natalia put up the Chocho Sun opera by Puccini. Kolyash Basetova played the leading part in it. People who wanted to watch it were queuing up there. Eisenstein came to watch the second performance of the play, approached the box office, and said, give me a ticket for Cho Cho Sats, please. Before the youth theater opened in Kazakhstan, I worked in the opera house, but presented concerts for children too. These were the first concerts for children in Kazakhstan. They applauded loudly to music by Prokofiev in the auditorium of the opera house. Incidentally, there were night performances too. Pomerantsev acted as the compere. Only famous Soviet artists performed on the stage. After a play finished, night concerts were performed. They started at half past 12 every night. All the cultural figures evacuated here participated in them. Actually, there are more little-known facts. For example, once Natalia Satz was invited to celebrate a big festival, which was Akin's Aitus, or competition between improvising singers held in the opera house. The stage was decorated with interesting Kazakh patterns. The floor was covered with carpet. When Jambo's performance was announced, he was greeted with such loud shouts that unless you saw smiling faces and waving hands, you would think that an earthquake had occurred. The great Akin was 95 years old at that time. From the Novels of My Life by Natalia Satz. <laughs> Epilogue. Her Epoch. Natalia Satz and her daughter lived in the Amati Opera House for a few months. They had both good and bad experiences there because it was during the war after all. 
However, it seems that this theater in this city gave her the unforgettable sensation of flight. In 1944, Natalia engaged in her theater of youth, which was the first in Kazakhstan. It was a whole epoch, which wasn't connected only with the many years she spent in Almaty. She created her very own epoch here. I'm in Almata now. I just came here by myself. I'm considered one of the people living here. They have absolute trust in me, which encourages and inspires me so much. From the novels of my life by Natalia Satz.